Every two years, ancient clans of Aboriginal Australians come together in Northern Australia for three days and three nights of dancing. <laughs> to prepare for the festival, I will go to the most remote community of Australia. <laughs> and crocodiles? It's not here? In, in, in there. Okay, let's go. And I will follow the dancers from a faraway village on a long journey to the land of their ancestors. This forest covers millions of square miles. No roads, no houses, just an infinite ocean of trees. Crocodiles are sunbathing in shallow murky rivers. This is the north of Australia, the end of the world, Cape York. They said they would meet us, but they didn't. Welcome to Lockhart River an ordinary native Australian township in the northernmost tip of the continent. The closest city is 800 kilometers away, but they have electricity and every house is equipped with a satellite dish. During the wet season, dirt roads erode and it takes 24 hours to reach the closest neighbors by boat. That's why there are a lot of SUVs next to every house. Really, a lot of SUVs, a whole graveyard of SUVs. There is a huge supermarket in the center of the township. So now, Lockhart River has everything that locals have been missing so much for the last 50,000 years. The only voices heard in the desolate township come from a school. Today is the last day before winter break. And it looks like the whole town has gathered here, from children to elders. Local people are the direct descendants of the first migrants that came to Australia 50,000 years ago and had been living here ever since, completely isolated from the rest of the world, until Europeans came. Oh, found it way back in old shop, mm. right back on the beach there. We moved the people who came to the site in 1968. Aboriginal people from all over Australia were forced into these church missions, which are no different in their essence from reservations for American Indians in North America. Their lands were taken by gold and coal mining companies, and an attempt was made to turn them into Europeans. We have our, we have our challenges in that area, but mm. we're getting better. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. They have to learn how to sit and listen to the teaching, yeah. put their hand up to you us. You have your family in Cairns, yeah. right? And you... They have to learn how to read and write in English. In English. Yeah. And the, the original language... Uh, we don't the... teach the original you know, language. Uh, a mere half century ago, Aboriginals of Lockhart Mission used to get beaten up for any attempt to talk in their native language. As a result, people who were forced to live together but couldn't understand each other ended up talking Creole, a pidgin based on broken English and bits and pieces of tribal languages. And hey, how long are you teaching here? Year and a half. Year and a half? Is it long for, for this long. village? Yeah? A year here is worth five elsewhere. The previous principal didn't even make it through three months. Working here is far from being easy for Anglo-Saxons who are used to discipline. The chairperson of the Council of Elders is sitting among other moms and grandmas and rooting for her grandkids. She is not actually local. 20 years ago, she followed her missionary husband into Lockhart and has been living here ever since. That is very interesting. Oh, yeah, people. 
A bag of potato chips from the supermarket shows that the forces in this battle are not equal. And here is it possible to find a job for them here in the, in the it's community? It's very hard, you know, uh, at the moment, if you have no good education, yeah. come back here because jobs are so limited here. Mm. We can't find a job for everybody. Yeah. Two years ago, the Lockhart team won an Aboriginal dance festival, and now they are considered to be one of the most skillful dancers in the north of Australia. These dances are the reason why I covered 15,000 kilometers from Moscow all the way to the northern tip of Cape York. Big event is the Laura Festival. Yeah. And it, it falls in. Okay. Boys and girls, we're going to do a relay. Ring the bell in this case. It's time to go home. What number can I be Ring, ring, ring. Ding a ling a ling. <laughs> okay. Bye, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. There's still some time left till the dress rehearsal, so I have arranged a meeting with local fishermen. The traditional way of fishing in Cape York is not for the faint-hearted. Using these toothpicks, aboriginals try to catch barramundi fish, basically competing with crocodiles who enjoy themselves in the salty waters, much like a foodie in a supermarket. If you had been alone, the crocodile would have eaten you a long time ago. But since there are four of us, you have nothing to be afraid of. And why is that? Well, he's really shy. Right, shy. It can jump vertically several meters out of the water like a torpedo and crack even a buffalo's skull with just one bite. This whole thing with spears is more like a stupid children's game. Oh my god, my hands are trembling. That's the tip of Australia. Forty-five years ago, the government decided to shut down the Lockhart River mission and move Aboriginal people out of the wilderness and closer to an airport and roads. My new friends were born in a township with a supermarket. For them, fishing is more of a hobby. So guys, are you preparing to this festival, right? Yeah. Yeah? And maybe you can show me a few movements from your dance. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah? yeah? Uh, start up. He's the, one of the main dancers. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I face that. Shake a leg. Yeah. Like shake it. Shake it. Yeah. Shake it. Yeah. yeah. And you have to make some ring, right? Yeah. yeah. And after you go, yeah. Like that, like that. And this is the main movement, right? Yeah. And why it's like that? That's just for the style. Like for the style, like. Yeah. <laughs> After two years of preparations, the day has finally come. The whole art gang is here. Patrick and Ray are already in war paint. They are decorating children with images of rainbow snakes and white frogs, the township totems. Father Brian, with three white cockatoo feathers on his head, is talking to the crocodile drum. Uncle Lawrence is trimming skirts. As the saying goes, a talented person is indeed talented in everything. It turns out that Josiah is not only an acclaimed painter, he's also the principal of the ballet. He will lead the Lockhart team to its new triumph at the Laura Festival. So you're going to do it now? And we're going to do it now. And what I'm going to do, we're going to... The main ritual is performed against the background of SUVs and filmed with the last generation smartphones. Globalization, they say. At 
last, dancers are lining up under the light towers on the baseball field. Yet another gift to the authorities. The dress rehearsal begins. In anything, it reminds me of a theater whose main medium of expression is the shake a leg dance. It can be used to tell just about any story. Josiah is reading the libretto. The head teacher is holding the sheet for him. One little kitten he can't sleep and he's restless. Then all of a sudden while the others are sleeping. A sophisticated viewer might see this as an allusion to the lost generation story. Up until 1970s, Australian government used to put children from Aboriginal settlements into white families to give them European education. The experiment on mandatory assimilation failed, proving itself to be a real tragedy for several generations of indigenous people. I want to ask you about this movement. Came from. <laughs> <laughs> well, the movement, like it was handed over from people from our own people before they were the courier of the So then they came with the people. Yeah. 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 For Aboriginal Australians, dancing has replaced written history. Like a newsreel, it captured the everyday life of the community. Here's barramundi fishing, and this is hunting for feral cows that went into the woods after the community moved to a new place. Um, Laura, we're leaving on Thursday to go to family just to let you know we leave at 8 o'clock in the morning, and all of the children and the adults involved need to be... Guys, are you going to festival? Yeah. yeah. I will drive you there. Okay. We are here. You know? Hey, hello. It's a bus to Wara, right? Both of them, yeah. 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 And what time starts? Um, we should be loading up in about another 10 minutes, about 10 minutes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, cool. Whew, spill. Whew, I made it. Early in the morning, the whole village gathers next to the store to board the buses and leave for the Laura Festival. I'm going with them. Christina? Yeah. Joey. 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 Come. Back in the day, we used to go to pioneer camps just like that, to the shouts of our group leaders, only without spears or straw skirts. I reform here and Yeah. Yeah. The repeat winners of the festival have to cover half a thousand kilometers by dirt roads. Almost 24 hours on a bus. What can I say? May the force be with us, and may the shy crocodile, the white frog, and the rainbow snake have our backs. Bye! Have a great trip! The 
The next morning, I will find myself having traveled 60,000 years into the past. Everyone is knee deep in dust, a true Australian Woodstock, except no guitars, no LSD. I will finally get a solo part in a Stone Age ballet. We're up there, and then just do what a normal I will go through an initiation ceremony under centuries old eucalyptus trees on the sacred Bora. It looks, uh, am, am I looking look uh, eagle? No? <laughs> <laughs> the Laura Festival takes place at an ancient site of power. The tribes of the northeast of Australia had been meeting here since the beginning of time. An elder of a local tribe is showing me the split rock caves that have one of the earliest rock paintings in the world. Thirteen thousand. Yep. Yeah. This white human, or it's not human. No, it's a it's a female spirit, ancestral spirit, um, or cougar, female cougar that steal young men. The dance in Lockhart immediately comes to my mind. How did how did they use this painting? Um, For which reason? Just a um, warning to, uh, just a, to tell the other families that come up what was here and what they can hunt around here. Several thousand years before Josiah's paintings, the ancestors of aboriginals practiced the same kind of art. They depicted the world around them to share important information with other tribes. Dancing was just another cryptic language. And this painting? Bodies all decorated, um, so they're ready for ceremony. So it's going to be dancing. Yeah. Yeah. Be dancing. <laughs> it's somewhat surprising, but Shake a Leg Dance seems to be of the same age as these cave paintings. I'm sure that even back then, no one could explain where these moves had come from and what they meant. I wake up to familiar sounds but cannot believe my eyes. Tents and bonfires in the shadow of eucalyptus trees seem to make the body-painted Lockhart inhabitants much happier than SUVs and bungalows. Father Brian looks like a shaman in this attire. Uncle Lawrence is sitting in his wheelchair like a chieftain on a throne. Hey, Uncle Lawrence, hello. 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 How was it for you? All right. Is it a good one? Good one. And do you have other activities like campfire or something? Yeah. Do you want to feel it? Yeah. Yeah. Laura is the main Aboriginal dance festival in Australia. This year, 17 communities have come here from all across the nation. And in this case, people are very different, but their dances are so much alike. <laughs> May I have one too? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And what the story is about? Yeah? What's happening with him? Uh, he's fighting, defending himself. That's a long story, as I see. Shake a leg. Go. Shake a leg, okay. I figured out back in Lockhart, elaborate answers are not to be expected. Maybe it's because English is not their native language and their own languages don't have compound structures. Maybe it's because of natural humbleness. Maybe they are just not interested in talking to me. After all, nobody comes into this life to be interviewed for TV. Hey, 
Hey guys, hello. Hey, can you show me some movements? Uh, oh! Move away everybody, move away everybody. Uh, looking at that. Go! I, 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 go! I, 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 go! I, I, ow! Okay, I can, I can hold it. The only language we can freely speak to each other is dancing. And learn me how to do that. Five thousand people from all over the world have come to watch the festival this year. Performances start in the morning and continue well after midnight. The main stage that used to be Bora, a sacred site for rituals, is covered with a cloud of dust rising up from under dancers' feet. Everyone is knee deep in dust, a true Australian Woodstock except no guitars, no LSD. Guitars are replaced with digital do, the principal Aboriginal instrument that puts you into deep trance in a matter of three minutes. These guys have been living in a city for a long time, and they have a good grasp of the market situation. Their performance has everything to impress the tourist audience. Boomerangs, didgeridoo, deforestation dances, and of course, kangaroo hunting. The hermits from a desert in the central part of Queensland are coming onto the stage. Back in the day, the barren lands of their tribe were of no interest to white colonizers, and today they are one of the few who manage to keep their traditional lifestyle. The rumor is they still practice circumcision with a stone knife. Here's a tribe from another remote community hunting an ostrich. I think I got it. Living close to their roots makes the tribe's dance less choreographed. Take this ballet, for example. These dancers are from the northernmost part of Cape York. The proximity of Papua New Guinea and Torres Strait Islands made their drumming and chorusing so different from other performances. Primeval beats are replaced with modern harmonics. During the break, firemen are laying the dust, and I meet the festival director. 
a professional dancer from Sydney of Aboriginal descent. It started because um, Aboriginal people rarely have a chance to come together um, and celebrate. Normally we come together to um, the funeral and you as a dancer should know where this movement came from. Well, it comes from our old people. And, and culturally, we actually um, we dance about our environment, we dance about the, the food we eat, the winds that blow, everything in inspires us. Uh, we find in Northern Territory near Darwin, some of the Aboriginal tribes, they do a dance about the bombing of Darwin. Yes, we're the world with the Japanese. If the festival director himself cannot explain the origins of this dance, the only thing left is to accept that the world cannot be fully understood and just keep watching. What you have? I'm full into a lot of So we put the kangaroo. Um, it's a native pepper berry. Ah, very hot. This will help the burn. Yeah, thank you. Preparing for an open-air fest, I followed the Russian tradition of stocking up with canned food. I couldn't have imagined that I'll find a Michelin chef here fusing modern recipes with Aboriginal traditions. Well, so many spices, so we don't even don't know it. No. Why don't they eat the traditional? Well, a lot of a lot of indigenous people have lost the art of cooking the Aboriginal food, but not only that, finding Aboriginal food because of the, the land's been cleared has taken its toll. So a lot of this stuff now is being grown by indigenous communities, Aboriginal communities. So thank you, man. I'm going to eat that. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, Aboriginal. This is amazing. McDonald's pales in comparison. Meanwhile, the performances resume. The ground under my feet literally starts vibrating. That's the didgeridoo. I'm following its sound as if I were under a spell. I'll try to ask for a lesson in the musician's camp. I need to take a deep breath. <laughs> I'm supposed to breathe in and breathe out at the same time. I just don't get it. <laughs> If the timer don't go all the way through, could you guys sing uh, uh, your favorite song for me? Hello, friend. What you know? It's raining here, <laughs> brother. <laughs> <laughs> ask you about the uh, dream time. What is it for you? The dream time is still here. Mm. I believe that as long as one drop of Aboriginal blood is in Australia, and that creation happened through that travel of the rainbow serpent all over the land, creating places, you know? What is the rainbow serpent? It, 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 it's, it's, it's the... If I can just say like this, the... the, the, the the mindset of the dreaming is encapsulating the spirit of the rainbow serpent. If I got those long and poetic explanations right, Aboriginals don't separate things in the living and non-living. 
rocks, rivers, crocodiles, wind, earth. For them, everything is filled with the spirits of their ancestors. That's why you can't own land. You can only be grateful for the possibility to live on it. What was the song? I think, I think that many a kangaroo, well, many are like for me, you know? Kangaroo, the kangaroo. Woo! What was that? The kangaroo. Hey, dang, you would sing that song, Frank. You see? Kangaroo. Yeah. Kangaroo, you see? They just sang a song about a kangaroo and it ran over here. It's the first kangaroo I saw in Australia. It was like some lightning that flashed through the camp and knocked down several tents. It's after midnight, but the boar is still full of people. Everyone's attention is now centered at the warriors that were teaching me in the morning how to hold a spear. They are performing a dance about an epic hero who is searching vast lands for his home by talking to the wind, the sea, the forest, and the desert. It's like an Australian odyssey. Yes, a lot of Aboriginal tribes live on alien lands. Yes, highways have passed through their sacred sites, but dances somehow bring them back home into the dream time. Today is the end of the festival, the time for the best dancers to perform. Waiting for the headliners, the Lockhart River team, to come on stage is exciting for everyone, both audience and performers. So how was it, guys, for you? What good Yeah. We are just performing in front of our community members that we Yeah, only place in Australia where all different cultures come and meet and dance. I am also nervous. I've started to feel like a member of this family. The program consists of tribal classics, ostrich moves, the drunken dance, And of course, the fish, which I didn't manage to catch, Baramundi. Phlegmatic Josiah is dancing shake a leg. He's portraying a bull. And for the first time since I have met him, he's smiling. Look, look, look. Uh, eagle, no? Get, 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 get,